So many careers in climate science need a good maths background, and I don't think everyone realises that. My name is Sammy, and I'm a climate scientist. So there are basically two halves to my job. The first half is research, and for me that involves looking at Antarctica and trying to work out how it's going to change in the future. I look at the surface of Antarctica's ice shelves, where they're melting, where that water from the melting might go, and what that might mean for Antarctica in the future. The other half of my job is teaching, mostly to geography students at universities. People are often quite surprised how much maths you need for geography, and for students who haven't looked at it since GCSE, it can actually be quite a big step up. But maths is so important for lots of different aspects of geography, such as working out where magma could be going out of a volcano, or working out where earthquakes might happen, for example. When I was younger, I was really into being outside. I had lots of pets, I loved animals. I also really liked music, so I wasn't actually thinking about maths a lot. Um, I played the oboe, I still play the oboe, and it's actually how I met most of my friends through doing musical things. At school, I really liked history and also, unsurprisingly, music. I think that was my favorite, but it was never really going to be a career for me. In terms of maths, I did like it, but I wasn't really good at it. It was my best friend, actually, who was the best at maths. She would get stuff straight away and I'd have to go home and do pages and pages of homework and work quite hard at it to actually get to the answer. Sometimes that would make me feel like I didn't want to do maths, but I did enjoy the process of trying to get to the answer. And I had a really good maths teacher who told me that it didn't matter that I wasn't the most naturally gifted in the class. I was persistent and that's what matters in the end because you do get to the answer and you know how you got there as well. When I was at school I actually thought I wanted to be a vet for a career. I even went to vet school for a term but found that I didn't really like it. Um, I do love animals, I have my dog Pingo and she's the best thing ever, but I wasn't really passionate about it in the way that you have to be for veterinary medicine. When I was thinking about my A-levels, I was still thinking about going down the veterinary medicine route, so I had to choose biology and chemistry. Then I got the choice of maths or physics, and I chose maths, which of course I'm very glad I did now. I also did an AS in history, so that I had a balance of things away from doing just sciencey things. The first time I probably realised I was interested in weather would have been going to see the film Twister with my best friend when we were about six years old. But for some reason it never really clicked that that could be a career that I could do, which looking back makes no sense at all because there's a female project lead running this science project. But I don't know, I guess I didn't really know anyone that had a career like that, so I must have thought, oh, that's something you can only do maybe if you're living in America and have tornadoes in your back garden. So I kind of made the connection between maths and climate science a bit by accident. When I started at vet school and in the first few weeks I started to think, well, this doesn't feel right, should I really be here? I thought back to my A-levels and what I was enjoying and I thought I'll just go and see what I could do with maths that might be interesting and climate science kept popping up the more I looked into it. I have to use lots of maths for problem solving in my job. I do lots of computer coding and that is essentially coding up mathematical equations. The main thing I'm trying to work out is how quickly heat goes through the ice in Antarctica. And that's using mathematical equations to work out how quickly the heat at the top of the ice shelf from the sun then moves down through the ice shelf and how much that's going to cause it to melt. All climate models are essentially made up of lots of differential equations, which are just like the ones that you learn to solve during A-level maths. Also mechanics is important because that's about forces and motion. And statistics comes up too, I never thought I'd have to use statistics, but I need it all the time to work out if my results are significant or not. Basically, all different parts of maths are really important in knowing what's going to happen to our planet. I think for anyone that's considering a career in climate science, well, obviously I'd tell them to take maths because it's so important. I remember for the interview I had for my first research position, I asked the person interviewing me, does it matter that I don't know much about the polar regions or ice? Because I was quite worried about not knowing that side of things. 
and he said to me that didn't matter it's much better I had the maths and he taught me the ice side of things and the other way around because it's much harder to pick up the maths later on. The most important thing is to work out what you're good at, what comes naturally to you or what you enjoy and then you can work out how to apply it to problems that you care about such as climate change.